Well, it was kind of strange. My uh, girlfriend, we had an apartment together there in McKinney, and uh, her her little brother came over to see her and needed to go buy something at, a, I think it was a penny store, that we went in there with him, and they went to the back, to, and she went to the back to help him pick out something that he wanted to buy, and uh, I was waiting around for her, and I saw this uh, couple of soldiers, they're standing pretty close where I was standing, and uh, uh, I think, I'm not sure, I think I asked where he was stationed, and he started talking to me then, and we, uh, we talked, and uh, his name was Alvin Moore, and lived there up in the next little town, close, pretty close. got acquainted and he started writing to me. He was in the service and he started writing. And that's how I met him. There was a mirror up there and he said he saw me in the mirror. When he first spotted me, he said he saw me in the mirror. Okay. Um, was you said earlier about that you lived on a farm? Um, what was that like? Well, some people might not think it's great, but I think, I think living on a farm is great. I think you can learn so much living out like that on a farm that you don't learn in a city. Uh, you learn how everything grows, how to plant and how to grow things that uh, some people that live in town don't even know. They might not even know which end of an onion to put in the ground, whether they put the top of it or the root end. But anyway, uh, it was fun. And um, you have your freedom out there to do whatever you want to, and you don't have to always be quiet because you're disturbing someone in, a, in the next door or apart the apartment or something. And uh, we had animals, and uh, we had horses, and I rode, I rode a horse, and we had, uh, we had two spotted ponies, and uh, me and my two younger sisters rode one to school a lot of times. There was a, there was a stall on the school ground that we could put the horse in when we got it there and close the door so, and then get on the horse to come back home in the evening then. And uh, of course sometimes I, I didn't realize I think that I should take the saddle off when I left the horse in the morning and put it back on in the evening because when a horse gets kind of lank with the saddle on, then the saddle's going to be looser. So we'd get on the horse in the evening, and sometimes that saddle would be loose. And I remember one day that we were uh, racing with someone else that had that was riding a horse, and the two horses were racing, and me and my two sisters were were sitting. One I, one might have been in the saddle with me, the little one, but one was behind me. Anyway, we were racing, and the saddle got really we were kind of weaving back and forth and almost falling. We got slowed down and got back to our usual posture. We almost fell off. But things like that were fun. But one of the horses that the boys rode was, the one we rode was really tame. Older horse. Yeah. A child could ride that horse when it wasn't in danger. And the other, I wouldn't have ridden at all. The other horse my brother had, his name, our horse was named Pearl, which suited her really well. But um, my brother's horse was Jot. And Jot's reins had to be held up really tight or he'd 
get worried. He was really heartless. And so the boys, the two boys would ride old Jock. But if my horse got behind Jock, he'd back kick him right in the chest. So I had to be careful. You know, Jock was so heartless. I had to be careful to stay away from the back of their horse. And sometimes we'd ride along together on the horses like that. And uh, one of my brothers, sometimes we wouldn't go to church at night, on Sunday night, but one of my brothers that was older than me had a girlfriend that's over nearer the church, and so he wanted to go to church on Sunday night, so he would ride a horse over to his girlfriend's house, the church, to, so they could go to church, and if I wanted to go, I would ride the horse behind his saddle with him and go to church at night, and we had to ride ride through a, a what we called a bottom uh, road, with a woodsy road, to get over to the church and uh, to her, his girlfriend's house, and then after church, ride the horse home, and I'd be getting sleepy, and I would hang on to the back of the saddle, and <clears throat> sometimes I'd just almost doze off, and if the horse jumped or moved, it would kind of wake me up, but that's the way I go to church on Sunday night sometimes, by riding with him on that horse. Uh, how did you make your living? We farmed. My daddy... Uh, farm this land and all of us had to help on the farm. The men would do the plowing, had teams that pulled the plow, and uh, they'd do the plowing and and uh, what we what we had to do is they'd we had cotton and corn and they'd raise the they'd plant the cotton with a with a team with a planter and uh, then when, when the cotton got up big and, and uh, made the bowls of cotton, you ever see a bowl of cotton? Mm -hmm. White cotton? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When it would all get white like that, we'd have to pick it and make, have cotton sacks out of heavy material. My, my mother would sew the material together and make cotton sacks sacks with big straps about that wide that would go over your shoulder and hang down and you'd bend over and pick that cotton out and put it in the sack so the sack got you drag it behind you until it got really full and then they'd go weigh it and empty it out in a wagon and when the wagon got full they'd take it to the gin and have it gin and then the they'd pay them when the, a certain amount was a bale they call a bale of cotton and the gin would would uh, gin, gin it out you know get it the seeds out separate the seeds from the cotton and make it into a bale of cotton of about 600 pounds to a, a bale about so high and about this wide and that deep a big heavy about 600 pound bale of cotton and then they'd they'd pay them for the bale so my daddy made his money raising and selling the bales of cotton and if you had a good crop you'd have more more bales of cotton and all of us picked the cotton and then uh, the corn when the corn got dry where you fix it put it in the barn you know gather it and put it in the barn uh, they'd drive the wagon, uh, they'd, I would, I would drive the wagon along, and the men would get the ears of corn off the corn stalks and pitch it in the wagon. So I helped that way. Okay. So, and then uh, we had to hold the grass and weeds out of the cotton as it was growing up, too. So we had to hoe and, you know, use the hose and get the weeds and grass out and so it would grow. Okay. Well, I've noticed that you have a lot of antiques here. How did you get them? I 
had a lot of watch entries. Like, um, the angel or whatever. You know, the one for these pictures. Uh. Just through the years, collect. You know, I'm not really collecting antiques, but, uh, I just buy them at different places, and, uh, I guess the biggest antique, well, I have a sewing machine in there that's a 19 and 26 sewing machine. That, uh, that sewing machine was made two years after I was born, so that's that, that old, and, uh, uh, so still, it's, you use a pedal instead of electric like this one is and uh, you pedal it it makes it so and it still sews beautifully even though it is older than me or, or just just a little younger than me and uh, this uh, behind me here is real a real antique I'm sure it's a uh, uh, a German trunk and solid oak and I just I got it after I moved here and just uh, happened to see it and liked it and Vicki liked it so we got it after I moved here <laughs> where did you first live after you left your family home where did I first move after yeah. I married I, let's see, our first place was, uh, I believe, just between McKinney, McKinney and Anna, a little place called Melissa, out of McKinney. I believe that's the first place that we lived. We bought a little house there. And I think that was the first place we lived. Okay. Um, earlier when we were in the car, you said um, something about selling your earrings or aneurysm. Do you like to do anything about that? Oh, he said I could spill the beans on about them. Mm -hmm. Well, we all got along real well. I don't. I, he was teasing about. I could tell stuff on them if I wanted to. But, uh, don't it, uh, really it's not anything to tell other than, uh, my brother just a little older than me. He, uh, he's, uh, he said if I'd go outside and get something or other, you know, when it was dark outside. Out in the country, there's no street lights, and it is dark when it's dark. And he uh, he told me uh, to go, if I'd go outside and bring in a stick of wood, because they burn wood in the stoves. He said, if you'll go outside and bring in a stick of wood, I'll make you a doll bed at school, because he was taking shop at school. So what he did, he was wanting to trick me. So I went outside and got that stick of wood, but he locked the door behind me, and it was dark outside. That's what he wanted to do, is lock me out so I'd be scared. And that's what he did. It, it did work, but he, he had to make me a doll bed, though. He was taking shop at school, and he made me a, a cute little white doll bed, so that's, he was just in, it was interested in fun with him, trying to trick me. Hmm. Do you have any pets in that when you were growing up? We had a dog, oh, we always had a dog. What was our dog's name? Mm -hmm. What was our dog's name? What was our dog's name? Mm -hmm. Pooge. Pooge. <laughs> and when we wanted to, uh, we'd, we'd take 
the leftover biscuit that's out the back door. He was there with his head up wanting, wanting whatever we're going to let him have. And I dipped him a biscuit, catch it in his mouth and chew maybe once or twice a swallow and wait for another one. And we could pitch him a biscuit and he'd do that every time. Hold on, let me take a 